E. C. Kai. Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 199, Secret. So you be the concubine and I will be the wife. Shin Mia looked inquiringly at Lu Wan'er. With Lu Wan'er's graceful tone of voice, one did not know where did it came from. Initially when she heard Lu Wan'er's words just now, she felt that it was not false that each of the Lu family was intelligent. However this words made Shen Miao feel that she was unable to know what was Lu Wan'er bottom line as one did not know if Lu Wan'er was really a fool or not to discuss about imperial matters. If young lady Lu has the heart, one can talk to his highness about it. Shen Miao smiled gently, it is useless to say these to me. I naturally know of it. Lu Wan'er looked at her in slight disdain. I am here to tell you this today, only because that one hope that you have some self-knowledge and take the initiative to speak to His Highness of your willingness to be the concubine. Shin Miao almost laughed out. She raised her lips slightly and said, This is someone I will not do. What did you say? Lu Anner's eyes widened, seemingly did not expect that Shen Miao would actually refuse. The volume of their conversation was somewhat loud that the surrounding Furin's gaze all directed towards them. Shen Miao did not hide away from them and smiled, with regards to the matter of being a concubine, I will not do it. Matters of brining and concubines for one's husband to spread out the branches is something I will not do. At the beginning when Prince Ruaya of first rank came to my Shen residence to propose marriage, he had already said that there would not be any other female in the inner courtyard of the Prince residence. If it wasn't that, I would not marry so far away to Long Yi. The surrounding Furin was stunned when they heard it. On matters of relationship, it was not fair between males and females. In the inner courtyard of males, there would be three wives and four concubines and no matter if it was Great Liang or Ming Chi, it was not that there was no couples without anyone else but it was very rare. Ordinary males would not be able to withstand the temptation, much less the wealthy families, official families and the imperial family. Prince Ruai of first rank had a handsome and romantic appearance with a powerful position that he gained at the very young age thus the world that he faced would be filled with flowers. How could a person like him would only have one woman in his entire life? This lady from the Shen family of Ming Chi indeed had a really big face and did not know how high the sky was and how thick the earth was. Lu Er was so angry that her face was ashen as she said word by word, Ruai Wang for first rank. This is jealously. A female jealously meant that one has a dereliction of virtue. Shin Miao smiled, most likely it is. I have always been jealous easily. If Prince Ruai of first rank had not proposed this condition, I most likely would not been tempted. Lu Er was so angry that she could not say anything. Shen Miao's attitude was like a thorn that made others unable to take action. The surrounding Furins were also flabbergasted. Initially when Shen Miao came to Long Yi, she did not live with her tail between her legs or lowered her head to be insignificant but instead was so arrogant that she even offended the Lu family that Emperor Yongle had to restrain from. One did not know where had she gotten the courage from or was she so stupid to such a point. Naturally Shen Miao was not afraid. Even if Emperor Yongle was not satisfied with her and wanted to bestow another marriage to Zi Jingxing, he would not bestow Lu Wan'er to Zi Jingxing. Even though Lu Wan'er said that she would provide a boost to Zi Jingxing's career when she marries Zi Jingxing, not to mention that Zi Jingxing do not rely on females' ability to climb up, even Emperor Yongle would not dare to let Zi Jingxing marry the Lu family easily. With regards to Consort Jing, most likely one was helpless on it. However if Lu Wan'er also entered the doors of the residence of Prince Ruai, then both brothers of Great Liang's imperial family would have relations with the Lu family. It was not a good thing for an outside family to have such power. Fu Zayu Yi could use Shen Miao and tie the Shen family together because the Shen family was loyal by nature but the Lu family already had bigger ambitions. Be it emotions or reasons, Lu Er would not be Emperor Yongle's choice. Even if this current moment of Shen Miao strongly rejecting Lu Er's suggestion was passed to Emperor Yongle's ears, it would still be along the lines of Emperor Yongle's mind. When Lu Furin and Lu Er were both frozen in place, one heard a light chuckled from the opposite side, 
Wang of first rank is indeed one who is disposition. Prince Ru I of first rank is young yet valued relationship and righteousness. He is indeed a rare male. Shin Mi Ao looked towards the speaker. That person sat beside Ji Yu Shu's mother and was a slightly thin furin, wearing a tea green colored robe and had a darker complexion with straight eyes, but because of one's mature age, it seemed to make her distance from others. Her eyes were somewhat long that seemed to be studying meticulously when looking at others, as if they could see through others. It made others feel uncomfortable and at first glance, one could tell it was a shrewd and intelligent person. Ba Zhao took the chance of pouring tea for Shen Mi Ao to softly speak by her ears, that is Yi Furin of the Prime Minister residence. With only this sentence, Shen Miao understood. Civil Yi family and military Lu family. It was assumed that this Yi Furin was a person of the Yi family of the Prime Minister residence, who was the too famous aristocratic family of Long Yi. Unlike the Lu family, which was somewhat arrogant, this Furin of the Yi family was much more restrained but could also let Shen Miao feel that she was even more difficult to deal with. Yi Furin looked at Shen Miao and suddenly smiled. The relationship between Prince Ruai and wife is very affectionate. It seemed that during the imperial hunt, Wang Fu would also be following along. Shen Miao said with a smile, This is still to be discussed with His Highness. She was unable to talk freely or recklessly. One feared that the entire room of people today in this bright summer banquet had ill intentions, thus she dared not take anything lightly. It is Wang Fu's first time here, Thus one do not know of the beauty of the imperial hunt. It is an interesting event that Wang Fu most likely could also join in the fun. Yi Furin continued. However Lu Furin and Lu Wanner did not speak as they were blocked by Shen Mi Ao today and was very unhappy in their heart. Now that Yi Furin was speaking, they did not have any intention to help. Shen Mi Ao looked at that Yi Furin. She seemed to be forcing her to comply to attend this hunt. Ji Furin who was sitting beside Yi Furen, spoke with a smile, everyone must not force Ruai Wang Fu already. Ruai Wang Fu is young of age and like what Yi Furen said, it is her first time and one feared that there would be some shyness. Those who go to the hunt were all old acquaintances so naturally one have to think about it. She had taken the initiative to resolve the problem for Shen Miao. Shen Miao looked surprised over but Ji Furen smiled and nodded at her. Ji Furen's husband was the current dynasty left minister and the official position was not low thus the surrounding Furen would not refute her words. Yi Furen heard it and it was not good to continue to be aggressive and thus looked at Shen Miao, making Shen Miao frown slightly. This bright summer banquet then went by blandly. Lu Anner most likely was too angry by Shen Miao and immediately left. Lu Furin who remained there treated Shen Miao blandly. Since the host of this bright summer banquet was Lu Furin, the other Furins followed Lu Furin's footsteps and intentionally treated Shen Miao coldly. However when Shen Miao was young, she was always been treated coldly and thus did not place it in her heart. As she drank the tea, she listened to Ba Zhao explaining the relationships of all the Furins and remembered it to heart. Not only these cold treatment did not affect her, he allowed her to fully remember these people relationships. When leaving, naturally no one sent her off, just as she was to board the horse carriage, unexpectedly someone stopped her. Upon turning one's head back, it was Ji Furen. Ji Yu Shu's mother had a dignified and amiable temperament but her appearance was similar to Ji Yu Shu. She smiled as she saw Shen Miao. Yu Er had said to me that when he was in Ming Chi's Ding capital, one had received Ru Ai Wang Fu's care so today I thank Wang Fu on behalf of Yu Er. Shen Miao blushed in her heart and continued to say that she dared not. After all it was her that made use of Ji Yu Shu's Feng's Yan Pawn Shop on a lot of matters. Ji Furin saw that there was no one around and approached her closer to speak softly. Today Wang Fu had also seen. The Lu family's fourth young lady single-heartedly wants to marry to the Prince Ruai residence but Wang Fu do not need to place her words to heart. If it was possible, then fourth young lady would already been Ruai Wang Fu. It is only effort on one's lips. As for the imperial hunt that Yi Furin mentioned today, it is better for Wang Fu to mention it to the prince. Wang Fu mustn't be scheme into the steep water. Seeing that there were other Furins that were coming out of the Lu residence, Ji Furan said, 
It is inconvenient for me to speak about the rest. If Wang Fu is free, do come over to the residence to sit. Most likely you are not familiar in Long Yi and I can talk to you about it. After that she said her goodbyes to Shen Miao and hastily left. On the road back, Shen Miao kept thinking about today's matter. She did not put Lu Wanner's words to heart but one did not know why, she felt very bothered with that Yi Furen. She asked Ba Zhao, in the banquet today, it seemed that one did not see Yi Furen's daughter. How many young ladies are there in the Yi family? Why did they not bring any out? Ba Zhao was startled before she shook her head. There are no young ladies in the Yi family. Why is there no young ladies? Shen Miao frowned. This is a matter that everyone knew in Long Yi. Ba Zhao said, the Prime Minister residence's Prime Minister Yi and Yi Furen were married young. Shortly after marriage, they had a daughter but unfortunately she died young. Yi Furen was overly grieved and the relationship with the Prime Minister Yi got weakened. Prime Minister Yi later brought in a concubine and the concubine gave birth to a son, which is the current young master Yi of the Prime Minister residence. Shen Miao frowned, there are no more other descendants in the Prime Minister residence. Ba Zhao shook her head, after Prime Minister Yi had young master Yi, there was an assassination and he hurt his root and thus it was impossible for him to have any descendants. Shin Miao was flabbergasted. For such a high-ranking aristocratic family like the Yi family, how would there only be one son? She asked, there cannot be only one Shu son in the Yi family? That is not so. When the concubine gave birth to young master Yi, she passed away as she was physically weak. But there are others who said that the Yi family killed the concubine. After young master Yi's birth, he was raised under Yi Furen's name and have a position of Adi son. But, Ba Zhao paused, even with Adi son position, this young master Yi was not valued by Yi Furen. Why is this so? Shin Miao was curious, even though it was not one's flesh and blood but under the situation that there was no other children and that he was raised under her name, Yi Furen should treat this Di son better so that it would be better for the future. Young Master Yi was born with a congenital disease and his feet were unhealthy. This kind of people would not be able to enter official dim thus there were people who said that this generation of the Yi family would fall on to one's insignificant younger brother-in-law. Shen Miao then understood clearly in her heart. So he was a crippled, no wonder Yi Furen did not value him. Thinking about this, her heart brightened. Civil Yi family and military Lu family. The Lu family already sent consort Jing into the palace but the Yi family did not. It was not because the Yi family did not have ambitions but because the Yi family did not have any daughters. One feared that if one sent one's relative daughter in, it would not be easy to control. Now the current circumstances. Shen Miao could almost guess Emperor Yongle's plans. The Yi family was unable to be equal to the Lu family due to the descendant matter and if they were to ally with the Lu family, once the ambitions in court were successful, it would only be the Lu family that would gain advantages. People would always have inferiority. Why was it that both of them were aristocratic families but at the end you alone get everyone while one slowly diminish? It is better for me to overturn the water. Emperor Yang Le most probably want to provoke an internal struggle between the Lu and Yi family and subdue the Yi family before dealing with the military power of the Lu family. It would be much easier like this. It was just that the Yi and Lu family had good relations for so many years and their interests were intertwined. The Yi family had the Lu family's weaknesses and how could the Lu family not have the Yi family's weaknesses? It was not an easy thing to drive a wedge between them. As her mind was thinking about these matters, Shen Miao did not realize that the horse carriage had returned to the residence of Prince Ruai of first rank. It was only until Ba Zhao called out Master and someone knocking on her head and said, what are you thinking that made you so entranced? It was only then when Shen Miao saw Zi Jing Xing. He had returned early today and was still wearing the dark red official uniform with an imposing look. Shen Miao got spirited and pulled his sleeves and headed to the study in a rush, saying, just in time. I have things to ask you. Zi Jing Xing was stunned first before being helpless and let her pull him forward. It was Ba Zhao and Gu Yu, who were at the side, who were stunned silly. Ba Zhao said in all smiles, Furin is indeed proactive. Gu Yu said, 
that is ought to be, Tang Shu appeared from behind and said, look what look, still don't work, Ba Zhao and Gu Yu stuck their tongues out and quickly left. Tang Shu looked at the closed doors and shook his head before sighing, the red has not fallen so how can it be proactive? Meaning, the sheets are clean and our Zhao Zhao is still innocent. When in the room, Shen Miao then told Zi Jing Xing of what had happened today. Zi Jing Xing said, the Imperial Hunt? Shen Miao nodded her head, it seems somewhat unusual. The Imperial Hunt is on the second day of the sixth month of every year and it was the established standard by the late Emperor. Zi Jing Xing said lazily, however Imperial older brother and I would only be wandering outside and would not go deep in. Why? Shen Miao asked, dangerous. Zi Jing Xing lowered his voice. Shen Miao was startled. When Zi Jing Xing saw her expression, he laughed and raised his eyebrows, scared already. What is there for me to be scared? Shen Miao looked at him. Do you mean that there will be someone that will take action against the Emperor and you? In the Imperial Hunt, the Imperial Guards are all inside so who would have such a courage? You have seen Mo Yu army before. Zi Jing Xing suddenly changed the topic. Those are my people and has nothing to do with Great Liang's army. Imperial older brother also knows about it. Do you know why the Mo Yu army was raised? Because the Imperial army is not trustable? Shen Miao quickly asked but she somewhat could not believe in her heart. Zi Jing Xing snapped his fingers. Shen Miao did not say anything. The world had said that Emperor Yongle was Great Liang's wise monarch and the younger generation of Great Liang were of high esteem. It seemed that the commoners were as such but the officials and soldiers were not as loyal as rumored. There was no fighting and scheme in the imperial family of Great Liang but there was external aggressions. The imperial army of the imperial family was passed down from generation to generation. That was to say that the late emperor had passed down the people but they refused to comply with the current emperor Yongle. Thinking about the cool tone of voice Zi Jing Xing used on the late emperor previously, Shen Miao because curious in her heart, she hesitated for a moment before looking at Zi Jing Xing to ask, speaking of which, at the beginning when you drifted to the Ding capital of Ming Qi, what was exactly the circumstances and ongoings? Hearing that, Zi Jing Xing's gaze slightly changed. Shen Miao said beside him and she could feel the coldness of his emotions at that moment. After a while, Zi Jing Xing smiled and reached out to stroke Shen Miao head. How come there are so many questions? Want to know my secret again? If you want to know then come and exchange yours. He smiled warmly. One's body can also do. Shen Miao rolled her eyes. Zi Jing Xing again said. But you seemed not to be angry with Lu Anner's words at all? He was slightly dissatisfied. Someone covet over your husband and you are not furious at all? Shen Zhao Zhao, you really have no conscience. Shen Miao said, anyways, you will also not agree to it, isn't it so? The Lu family is ambitious and you most likely do not have a heart so big as to raise a poisonous snake at one side. Zi Jing Xing laughed out loud and stared at her mouth. Aren't I raising a poisonous snake at one side? It is also a beautiful snake. This person could not be serious for more than three sentences. Shen Miao could not be bothered to talk to him and just said, The Yi family. What do you think of the Yi family? Zi Jing Xing pondered, The Yi family people are smarter than the Lu family and knows how to endure silently. Perhaps it is because of the matter of descendants. They are not as arrogant as the Lu family. Imperial older brother and I plan to start from the Yi family and incite disharmony between the Yi and Lu families. Shen Miao pulled back her hand. She did not know why but when she faced Yi Furin today, she had an indescribable feeling. She seemingly felt that the Yi family was not as easy to deal with as it looked on surface but this thought came unfathomably that she did not know how it happened. However Zi Jing Xing saw her strange look and asked, you seem to have something to say? Shen Miao shook her head. It was most likely she was too paranoid. Thus she asked, will you be attending this imperial hunt? Ji Furin told me not to be schemed by others and I felt very strange. Zi Jing Xing's expression turned slightly cold. This time even if one is unwilling to go, 
you have to follow. Why is it so? Today it is the 60th year sacrificial ceremony stipulated by the late emperor. In the imperial hunt, imperial older brother must hunt a lion in the hunting grounds as it represent that the common year would be smooth and he is a wise monarch. Lion? Shin Miao said, that is a wild beast. In a general hunting ground, Naturally safety was the most important. After all the people who were hunting were all high-ranking officials and aristocrats and it was not good for one's life to be harmed. There would not be lions but wild hare or foxes, else a life would be lost in a moment of carelessness. Beasts are not to be feared. Zi Jing Xing lips were raised but his smile was somewhat cold. Beasts would not release arrows secretly and is much safer than people. Only the imperial army can be brought in and that was the rule set by the late emperor. However it is difficult to say if the people of the imperial army is loyal or not. Zi Jing Xing raised an eyebrow, so you have to know that this is a match that the late emperor left for us brothers. To let everyone under heavens watch. Imperial older brother and I do not have any choice even though one knew clearly about it. He then looked at the sorrowful Shen Miao and pinched her face, but you can rest assured that nothing will happen to you. Even though the females of the imperial family follow by name, there is no need to enter the hunting grounds. Shen Miao asked, do you have assurance to manage? There was an bad premonition in her heart and seemed to have seen through Zi Jing Xing's joking expression that he was not relaxed at all. Zi Jing Xing stared at her and shook his head, no. Shen Miao's heart was lifted up tightly. Zi Jing Xing smiled, swindle you only. Shen Miao glared angrily at him. Zi Jing Xing stretched out lazily and said, after the hunt is over then one will speak to you about matters of the palace so that you will not thinking of it all the day. He said in a smile yet not a smile, you are now my Z family people, so one have to carry some things. Shen Miao's heart moved. Did it mean that Zi Jing Xing planned to tell her about his secret? Zi Jing Xing's identity, how he drift to the Ding capital of Ming Qi, with Emperor Longlis and Zi Jing Xing's attitude towards the late emperor. She had felt that there was something in it. One could feel the heaviness of the matter vaguely as Zi Jing Xing's frivolous mention of the past was not a common experience. Even though she would be pleased to know about this secrets but why did she feel so uneasy about this imperial hunt? It was like something bad would be happening. Her heart was beating very fast and despite all the efforts to calm it, it was still restless. She kept silent but her fist was secretly clenched. In the imperial palace of Great Liang, Empress Zhanda was listening to the palace made reporting of the events of today's bright summer banquet and when she heard Shen Miao's with regards to the matter of being a concubine, I will not do it. Matters of brining and concubines for one's husband to spread out the branches is something I will not do. At the beginning when Prince Ruai of first rank came to my Shen residence to propose marriage, he had already said that there would not be any other female in the inner courtyard of the prince residence. If it wasn't that, I would not marry so far away to Long Yi. Empress Zhanda could not help but laughed out. She was naturally gentle and dignified and was calm normally but when she laughed, there was actually some charm of a young female. What made the Empress so happy? Emperor Yang Le's voice was heard from outside. His expression was a little cold and when he saw Empress Zhanda's appearance when he stepped in, there was a peculiar look that flashed in his eyes. Empress Zhanda was smiling somewhat unrestrained, Kyle Yan, repeat Wang Fu's words to his majesty. The palace made by the name of Kai Liang quickly lowered her head and mimicked Shen Miao words again. After hearing, Emperor Yang Le brushed his sleeves and said furiously, babbling nonsense, completely lack of regulations, extremely impudent. Kyle Yan jumped in shock and her entire body was somewhat trembling. The anger of the emperor was not something that a small palace made like her could bear. Empress Zhanda looked blaming at Emperor Yongle and said to Kyle Yan, withdraw first. Kyle Yan was relieved and quickly withdraw. Empress Zhanda then smiled. Jing Xing's wife has a temper that is made in heavens like him. Both of them are so straightforward, they are really temperamental people. It's alright that Zi Yuan is being willful, you are also following him to be willful? Emperor Yongle looked at Empress Yan her with dissatisfaction, 
The Empress seemed to like Shen Miao very much, it had been a long time since someone this interesting appear in Long Yi. Empress Zhonda smiled and watched Emperor Yongle sat by her side, her tone of voice was soft but her voice was unable to hide the praise, look like a smart person but it is rare that one could maintain a sincere heart, one cannot see where the smarts is and also cannot see the sincerity. Emperor Yongle said coldly, it is however only a female that can dig for thoughts, if it was truly the case, with Jing Xing astute nature, how could he not see it and still extremely like her? Emperor Yongle disapproved, Zi Yuan is young and cannot tell the difference between right and wrong thus his heart and mind is confused by that woman. Empress Yonda sighed, she knew of Emperor Yongle's stubborn personality and did not want to compete with him, in any ways. Ben Gong viewed Jing Xing's wife as a good person. If she was really good then she would not boast shamelessly and speak of jealously. Emperor Yongle was very dissatisfied, could it be that the Empress thinks that not spreading out the branches for the husband and bringing in concubines is the right behavior? Empress Yonda smiled faintly, that is naturally excellent, it is just that only very few female could do it. It is Rui Wangf's fortune that she could do it, Empress. Hearing that, Emperor Yongle's brows wrinkled and the gaze that he used to look at Empress Zhonda was very strict. Chenki words are of indiscretion. Even though Empress Zhonda said as such, there was not much apprehension in her expression as she said, be it persuading or not, it is better for your majesty to worry less about the residence of Prince Rui. Jing Xing is one that has a mind of his own, by interfering. It would only attract his malice. Zen has one's viewpoint. Emperor Yongle said seriously. After a moment of silent, Empress Zhonda said, Is your majesty prepared for the imperial hunt next month? Only prepared a life. One was unable to see any expression on Emperor Yongle's face. Zen has already arranged everything. Can Chen Qi go along? Empress Zhonda asked. Chen Qi wants to follow by your majesty's side. Zen will bring consort Jing along. Emperor Yongle said, if something happened to Zen, there is still you overseeing the inner palace. Empress Yonda hang her head down and did not speak. After a moment she lifted up her head and smiled gently. Chen Qi understands. The person Zen cannot feel reassured is Zi Yuan. Zen felt conscience stricken to him when he was young and was hidden in Ming Chi. But the now even the stratagems are fixed. Zen could not finish the promised. In the future be it if he hates Zen or understands Zen's painstaking effort, what Zen could do is only this much. Emperor Yongle looked outside as he said in disappointment and frustration. It is unfortunate that Imperial Mother was unable to see him before her death. If Imperial Mother knows in the underworld and sees that Jing Xing is this outstanding, she would be delighted. Empress Yonda consoled. Empress. Emperor Yongle suddenly said. Empress Yonda looked at him and heard Emperor Yongle speaking. It is exhausting for you for all these years. It is Chen Qi's blessing to be able to share your majesty's trouble. Empress Yonda smiled, her expression was calm, seemingly no matter how great the suffering was would not repel her grace and elegance at all. She said, Chen Qi has accompanied your majesty for decades and your majesty treats Chen Qi very well. Chen Qi is already content. Emperor Yongle looked at Empress Yonda and seemed to want to say something. His lips moved but nothing was said. He only looked somewhat complicated at Empress Yonda before moving his gaze away and onto the bronze crane in the main hall that was spitting out green smoke. Empress Yonda also looked at her sleeve quietly as if those words that were just spoken were very commonly said. It was just that that those eyes were a bit wet. 